Hello one and all and welcome to a Ruby Arrowfell discussion. I'm your only mate and with me as always is... Max, if you change. Hey, hello, hello. Let me sit up. Okay. Oh, I'm good. Hi, how's it going? How you doing today? I'm doing alright because we're going to talk about a Ruby game. We is. We is going to be talking about it. It's a pretty swell game. At least I certainly think so. And I don't much care or cotton for the uh, the opinions of others. So as long as I'm happy, that's all that matters. Yeah, I'm basically the same way. I mean, I... I okay, this might, maybe I should have thought to ask you this before we started, but did you enjoy the game? I loved it. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Just making sure. Otherwise, oh boy, this is going to be an awkward discussion. Also, slight brag. I play through it so much to the fact that I got all the achievements. Ain't you just Mr. Fancy Blue Jeans? I mean, there's only 16. There's not, like, so, that many, and some of them... Deal. And some, and most of them are just like, complete this chapter, so basically just do the story. Yeah, no, it's not that complicated, but yeah. Yeah. I, I played, I, I played through it, uh, I played through it twice. One was, um, as a Let's Play, and I, I feel, I, I feel like it was a pretty decent one. I know. I watched it. Popular. Thank you. I know I'm not the most popular one in the world, but eh. I play what I want because it's fun. That's my whole memo. Yeah. And, alright, so here's the thing. Something to start off with is that this was, this particular game was developed by WayForward. Now, WayForward are pretty freaking awesome. They make a lot of really good games. I'd say they're probably most well-known for the Shantae series. Mm -hmm. That's why I know and, them for. Yeah, and see, the thing about WayForward is they make great games... What they don't make is long games, because they are no very notorious for the fact that they barely ever have a budget. Hmm. So, that is an aspect of which to address. This is not a long game, even if you, if you, like, uh, I gallivanted and meandered, got lost, and 100%ed it, and I beat it in under 8 hours. So, you know, that's maybe, at most, maybe three sit-downs for any given person. Yeah, I remember going through so many levels looking for skill points. Exactly. Particularly, so, like, the last one I had to find. Yeah, that was always a fun thing, trying to figure out where the heck those things were. But, um, uh, I guess we'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah. Uh, uh the, the, the entire game takes place during the, basically the big ol' honkin' montage of them tr uh, after they become, after they become huntresses, and they're, they're bopping around with an atlas and just doing their thing. While a, is, what I interpret as a Blake Crow duet song is playing. Yeah, which is interesting. Blake gonna be duetting with all the, all the, all the, all the family members, apparently. I, I want that to be a thing. I want, like, you know what, for Volume 9 soundtrack, can there be a Blake Ruby duet? I, I, I don't mind it. That, <laughs> and you that, know what? It, it would go, it would go leagues in favor of, of, of compensating for the fact that they barely talk to each other. <laughs> also, like... Now they sing! Also, just on that, I want that to be, like, a Blake Raven duet, and it's just them, like, it's just a rap battle, them sassing each other. <laughs> oh, dear lord. But, uh, yeah, so this this whole thing takes place during that time frame. Day in Atlas. And, <laughs> like, again, I don't want to, I don't want to... Okay, I'm going to get this completely out of the way, straight up, so that I can just focus on the good stuff, and I don't have to, like, bring up negative things all that often. Mm -hmm. But, like, that's one of the ways you can immediately tell that this game doesn't have the greatest of budgets is because, well, you start up the game and you get you get a text wall explaining some, what's going on before the game starts. Well, yeah, in case, like, someone who's playing it doesn't watch Ruby. But well, then yes, again, why would you be playing it? I don't know, but you know what else could have worked had they had a bigger budget? A cutscene! <laughs> You 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 could have had a you, you could have had a cutscene explaining this stuff, but um, I mean yeah probably. And also, this this game doesn't have a ton of voice acting in it. Uh, no, it's it just really... like the cutscene grunts and like other lines here yeah. and there for like whenever certain characters speak. 
yeah, miscellaneous noises for all the girls are included. And when there are animated cutscenes, at that point, then, yeah, um, they, 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 the, the full voice acting goes in. And they are animated by the exact same team that does the actual, you know, the actual show, and it's awesome. Wait, yeah, that is an awesome touch. I really like that they did that. Hmm. But, that's, um, something, that's something I always love whenever, like, a show, like has a video game it's just like if the cutscenes are animated by like the people who make the show mm -hmm. but let's see if i remember correctly this game has one two three somewhere in the ballpark of like five animated cutscenes in it mm. and i just find it interesting that the very first one happens about 45 minutes into the game. <laughs> yeah, the first one is after you beat the, uh, Goliath. The yeah, the Goliath in the tutorial level. But, yeah. um... Uh, well, not the tutorial level, I mean, you you, you... you go a little ways, but yeah. Yeah, it's a little ways, which threw me off, because, um... So, the very first level... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the RTX demo. Yeah, makes sense. And... After the save point, the Goliath fight is immediately after. Yeah, they probably did that so that you actually had a more satisfying demo. Yeah, it, which is why when Goliath, I first played it, I was like, Whoa, hang on, that's not how I remember it. What? Yeah, so like, because if the Goliath wasn't at the end of that level, uh, it would have the demo would have just ended with them um, walking off screen. and. Uh, well, it, uh, it would, would have ended with like the first ambush of the game. Right, and allow me to get this right out of the way. Yes, this game has a lot of ambush screens. Yeah, it does. You go through a lot of gauntlets, and it's obvious because it's obviously a, a cost thing. It's just like, it's a good way to get this game uh, a bit more runtime. Mm. But uh, I really didn't mind it because I found the combat fun enough that it, it didn't really matter. Yeah, if you have fun while playing a game, it's just like... All right. Yeah. So naturally, all four of Team Ruby are playable, and they've all got their their various strengths and weaknesses. Um, all of them are the best at at least one thing, and some of those things are better than other things. But all of them are viable. You can't play as any like if you oh so very desperately wished and chose to, you could exclusively play through the entire thing as one of them, only switching for the sake of puzzles. Yeah, you you can totally that do that. You could very much do that. I was tempted to do that, but I didn't do that. <laughs> I'll admit, I was tempted to as well, and like, okay, if my playthrough was recorded, there would be a lot of Blake, but I did play as, like, Ruby, Weiss, and Yang as well. I played as Weiss a lot, but I also definitely tried to go out of my way to not play as her exclusively. It was not an easy, it was not an easy task, but I, I found a way to make it happen. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, so... Ruby? Ruby's kind of... Kind of an all-rounder, but Yeah, also, I would... I would say that, I, too. I, and if anybody is... If anybody is an all-rounder, it's Ruby. Although, what she does have over everyone else is that she definitely has the best range. Yeah, her, her, like... Her melee, her melee attack goes hella far. Yeah, it does. Um, so if you if you if you boost her up enough, because th this game does have skill points, so you can you can boost your stats up. Boost it up enough, you could basically swat away enemies like flies, and it's pretty damn satisfying. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, especially those damn bats. Yeah, I know the bats. That's that's Which... the, that's like the that's like the first thing you need to do. Upgrade one of the girls to be strong enough to one shot those damn things. Which um, fun fact, uh, those bats were introduced. In After the Fall, by E. C. Really? Myers. Really, and from they're from a, they're from the book. Yep, and then they appeared in uh, Ruby Amity Arena. Oh, that's neat. So you know that gave them designs. They showed up at the end of Volume Eight, and here they are. Huh, well, there you go. That's pretty nifty. Yeah. In fact, uh, E. C. Myers himself did a playthrough of the game on his YouTube channel. Oh, I hope they at least quasically enjoyed it. Dude, he freaking loves Ruby. <laughs> Hell yeah! I mean, I would kind of hope they made at least two, three, three novels, three novels. Yeah, okay. I didn't know if they also did the the the, the Neo one. Yeah, he did. 
Okay, well there you go. So there you go. The, that says a lot. <laughs> so Ruby's your all-rounder gal, and also she, her her special action lets her her dash in the air, which also makes her invulnerable, which is good for getting through enemies. Yeah, if you want, if you've been through a level so many times. And you like you go back to keep exploring, but the enemies keep respawning. If you don't want to deal with them, just just play as Ruby. <laughs> yeah, you can basically phase shift through all of the enemies if you so choose. Yeah. At least until you get so strong that you can basically one shot everything. That's probably your best bet. Yeah. And uh, next. Yeah, speaking next of Ruby, like I think her exclusive achievement is the easiest. Yeah. All and right. And so all 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 of the girls. Yeah. Okay. So like I believe. For Weiss, Blake, and Yang, it's to kill Grim with their special ability, but with Ruby, it's just use it. Yeah, Ruby's achievement is a normal girl with normal knees. Ah. Uh, she do be mad fast. I see what they did there. Uh, well, it's also just like a callback to Volume One. I know. I see what they did there. Uh, dash fifty times using Ruby semblance, which you could easily do in the tutorial alone. Yeah, I, I think I did it in like the first like. Town ish yeah. level. Yeah, no, because Ru Ruby. Like the first time uh, you see the merchant, I just dash back and forth until I got yeah, the achievement. Yeah, well, here's the thing. In, in a game like this, mobility options are pretty much king. And basically, a Ruby dash is going to be almost your default like mode of transportation, almost. Mm. Unless you're really dedicated to playing as your, uh, your, 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 be your personal best girl. And it, I guess they aren't Ruby, which easily very much could be. I know of at least one person who would say that she is. But, um, but uh, unless you do that, you're pretty much just going to be traveling like, as Ruby, dashing all over the damn place. So she she's very handy. I I, I enjoy her very greatly. Um, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, the other achievements uh, for the girls are more than a name. Yep, that's why. Which is defeat 25 enemies with Weiss's semblance, which, by the way, I found I, okay, that I, so yeah, frustrating I when I tried to do it because I tried to do it early on. <laughs> Yeah, that was not your best call. Yeah, no, it was not, because I didn't realize the... Um, okay, so, for Weiss Assemblance, yeah, she creates a platform, but then it becomes just a... omnidirectional projectile. Yes. Like, it just fires ice shards in every direction. I mm -hmm. did not realize that as you, like, level up the goals, that does more damage. Yeah. They count as projectiles. <laughs> and speaking of Weiss, if you don't mind, Weiss is... She's basically your long-range fighter, essentially, because she has the, the hardest-hitting single-target uh, projectile attacks in the game. Oh, yeah. Fully maxed out, she does, like, 30 damage, and that ain't nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> Yeah, that's insane. She can one-shot, like, so many enemies. Yeah, so it's it's but, really good stuff. But there is a payoff, and that being it consumes the the most of your energy gauge. Yeah, so in order to so, use yeah, your it balances. In order to, yeah, in order to use your semblance, with the exception of Ruby, because otherwise uh, that'd be a problem. Uh, well, no. Oh, no, to use, no, 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 yeah, you're right. To use your projectiles. Yeah. Your projectiles take up your semblance, which is also your regen health bar. So Wait. if you use all of that up, and then you take a hit, you actually get hurt. Which is weird. It's very weird. But, because that doesn't really line up with the lore, but it just balances the game, because otherwise... It balances the game out perfectly, because here's the thing. Yeah, if they didn't it, do it, that, it, you might as well just be playing a Mega Man game. If all of the girls could use their projectiles without any consequence whatsoever in this game, you would never bother using melee. Yeah, you would just hang back and shoot everything. Straight up, if you could, okay, if Weiss, a fully leveled up Weiss, could just do her projectile without having to spend any resources whatsoever, she'd be unbeatable. Yeah. That alone would make her the best in the game. As is, tragically, I we know who is, we'll get to that later. Although, Weiss is absolutely nothing to sneeze at. Her, her melee is also, it's fine, it's not, I think it's actually numerically the weakest, but... She does two really quick stabs in succession, so they add up. Yeah. It, it, it's not it's not as bad as it seems. And <laughs> Plus, I, st I still love what you did with the Goliath fight in your playthrough. Oh, yeah? <laughs> when you were just like, shank, shank, shank. <laughs> shank, shank, shank. 
<laughs> and then you you actually like make the effort to go behind it and go shank your booty. <laughs> Yeah, that that was something I just decided to do at any any just about as often as I possibly could. Uh, in the spirit, it was it was in the spirit of Shantae actually because Shantae's crouching animation basically has her basically wiggling her butt at people. So whenever I had the opportunity uh, with Weiss, I just decided to have her do a, like a crouch and just kind of like flaunt herself at, at, at enemies. <laughs> Just to taunt them into attacking, it was, it was really good for the for the board tasks. I I I enjoyed that greatly. I love your sound that you make with like the. <laughs> I, I can't really do it. No, it's okay. I I, I make a, I make a lot of weird noises. <laughs> but yeah, no. And as you said, Weiss's semblance is basically creating platforms to jump on. And uh, if you wait around a little bit, they they start circling around and shooting little ice daggers. Hmm. Which is nifty. She does not do any summoning in this, but that's okay. There's only so many mechanics you could put into. I mean, Wester Summon does so much. It'd be a nightmare to like, you know, program yeah. everything into a game like this. And her semblance was summoning in this game, and her special action was like summoning a mo like summoning an enemy Grim, but as an ally. I feel like that would also probably break things a lot. It would because well, then would that just be limited to just Grim? Yeah, or, I don't know. Like, well, because there are, like, human enemies, too. Yeah. So, so if Weiss beats them and you summon them, that has some implications. It sure do. But, uh, yeah. So, Weiss is, thankfully, I'm, I'm happy to say, a pretty gosh dang good character in this game, and I enjoy playing as her a lot. Me. Yeah. Alright, I had to make sure to at least get my, my words in. Also, hang on, because you're the one who described it, I'm gonna. I'm. You. You described Weiss's semblance, and and when you did that, so I'm gonna briefly say Blake's, and then you can talk about Blake in the rest of the terms. Uh, it's only right. fair. Um, you yoinked it. You yoinked it. I'm yoinking it back. All right. So now on to uh, my best call, I guess. Mm -hmm. Blake. I'm going to just throw this out here right now. Her semblance. I don't know what the uh, uh, achievement is called. You can tell me that much. Uh, the achievement is a shadow of myself. Right. Which okay, is so... to defeat 25 enemies with Blake's semblance. And her semblance is to obviously create shadow clones. However, these ain't no ordinary shadow clones, at least not the ones that we usually see in the show. These damn things can fight back, and you're going to use that a lot. Yeah, um... The best strategy in the game is to... Pop a shadow clone, get Blake the hell out of there, and then just hammer the attack button while it invulnerably fights whatever it is you want dead. Or even just like, you know, just stand like at a stationary enemy, put down a shadow clone, and then just spam the melee button, and you just deal double damage. Yeah, so like, it, it, you can either do double damage, or if you're low on health, you can retreat and fight without consequence. Yeah. And this is, we're jumping ahead ever so slightly for this one, but... All of the girls can also upgrade their semblances by talking to certain people. And Blake's just lets her make another one. So she can make two of these things but and therefore do triple damage. Yeah, um... And you can talk about this part. Her stats ain't bad either. Alright, so at the very start of the game, uh, Blake actually has a numerically stronger uh, melee attack. Yeah, which is weird. I mean, I'll take it. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't la it doesn't stay that way, but yeah, she once, starts she starts with the strongest single hitting melee attack. Yeah, once you start like once you get everyone fully upgraded, uh, Blake's is ten and Ruby's is eleven. Yeah, for, when you up, it's weird when you upgrade Ruby's uh, her attack stat. One of the ones you upgrade will have a jump by two points instead of one. Yeah. Which almost makes me want to think that that was some kind of oversight or something. I mean, maybe. And also, just 11? That's a weird number to, to like, end it on. It is, so, yeah. So, yeah, Ruby Ruby ends up hitting harder than, than, than Blake does in the end, but that's yeah. okay. But then you could just apply the whole, like, you know, pop two shadow clones, you could deal 30 yeah. damage as Blake with one strike. Yeah, so, mm, fun that. So, hey, our goals but, uh, can do 30 damage with one attack. Yeah, so there you go. Hell also, yeah, Blake uh, and Weiss are the best. They really, they actually, I think they are. 
like I think statistically and uh, practically, I think they actually are the best characters in the game. Hmm. If uh, I had to say, like Blake's extraordinarily overpowered strategy of just shadow clone jutsuing all up in the all up in the place and ending a fool is probably the best. But Weiss is literally no slouch because just a quick just to quickly jump back to her for half a second. You can basically jump into an enemy, and with her evolved uh, semblance, essentially, she can pop two of those platforms in an enemy, and all of the ice daggers will basically spawn inside of the enemy and do so much damage. Yeah. It's slightly more dangerous than the Shadow Clones, but it does just as much, if not slightly better damage, if you can manage to aim it properly. So it requires more effort. Or, or even if not, just take advantage of iframes. Ex absolutely. So I would say Weiss and Blake are the best characters in this game. So that's pretty great. Yeah, like, I remember uh, watching uh, the archive of when uh, 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 Ray, who used to be a former member of Achievement, huh? Uh, was playing through the game. Yeah, once he realized uh, just how broken uh, that Blake strategy is, yeah. He was just like, well, I know what I'm doing for this. Yeah, I mean, I can't blame them. And, and like, when the upgrades came in, and he was just like, oh, don't tell me. Yeah. Like, there's no way they'd make her even more broken. Oh my god, they are. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. There was no other way they could think to upgrade it, so they just made her have to. And uh, I, I want you to talk about the fact that Technically, Blake has the weakest projectile. Yeah, numerically, Gamble Shroud does the uh, least damage out of all the uh, ranged options. But... but... Yeah, they balance it out. If you are really quick with button mashing... <laughs> Blake might as well be holding a damn machine gun. So, uh, and uh, it doesn't really matter oh. if her, if her, it doesn't really matter if her attacks, her, her projectile attack doesn't do much damage, because if you can shoot ten of the damn things off in a half a second, it, it adds up. Yeah, plus if you upgrade your aura regen, then it's not gonna matter. Yeah, absolutely. That's the, that's supposed to be like the one downside. Like, even, even Weiss, it does eat up a lot of aura, but if you get the aura regen going for you, you can very consistently just launch a big-ass icicle at people and, and, and end a fool without much mm. repercussions. It's pretty phenomenal. Yeah. You know, I really want to see someone with a turbo controller just, like, <laughs> use Blake's projectile. I want to see how fast it can go. I would imagine pretty damn. <laughs> but, um, oh, right. So, technically speaking, Blake's semblance, while it can be used to absolutely shred through enemies and bosses like they're made out of wet tissue paper, fundamentally, it's supposed to be used for, um, for, uh, pressure plate puzzles. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to be used for, but they made it too good. And even, like, just an aspect of, like, for the boss fights, they have those, uh, tracking projectiles. Mm -hmm. If you pop a shadow clone, that's what they'll go after. I discovered that during the last fight of the game. So did I. And, and I loved it. Wait. I was I thought it was so cool, I didn't even care that I could have probably used it earlier. Wait, was it the last fight? I actually can't remember when I discovered it, but... Either way, I definitely found it in the last boss fight of the game. It's like, oh! I discovered that it actually, before I yeah. finished the game. Yeah, it actually works like it does in the show. It is a distraction. You can use it to fake out an enemy. That is really cool, actually. Yeah. Oh, there is another aspect that... Um, it, you, could, you could use it to be even more of a power than this would uh, require Yang. Okay. Oh, um, um, so we're gonna are we gonna talk about Yang or is there? Hang on. Before I before we get into Yang and her stats and whatnot, is there anything else to say about Blake specifically? Um, just in terms of like uh uh gameplay, uh, I can't think of much else aside from just like I just really like it when you pop down a shadow clone, turn the opposite way, and you just make an X. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So basically, everything that's coming at you from both directions, you can, you can stop it. All right, now, Yang. Yang is an interesting character in this game, in that she is both good and horrible at the same time. Yeah. Um. Because well. Okay, her melee is the fastest. Like, she punches yeah. so so damn quick. 
Yeah, so basically, if but if you get her into a good position, and her attack stat has been buffed, she will do the most melee damage. Yeah. The Be problem is, she also has the shortest range. Yeah, so you have to get right up close and borderline just take a hit. Yeah, you basically have to hug the enemy to be able to hit him. Yeah, and early game. And take the, the most hits with her. Yeah, early game, that's not good. It isn't. Also, I'm just going to say it because I very rarely was able to find anything resembling a use for it. I think Yang's projectile is kind of worthless. Yeah, I, like, next to never used it. Yeah, no, basically, running around as Yang specifically and exploring the areas isn't that good of an idea because she has the least adaptable mobility of the team. So, really, the best strategy for her is have her friends set up a situation where you can then turn into her and then just rapid-fire punch and then get her out of there. Which actually kind of plays into what I was alluding to with Blake. Go right ahead. So, fun fact, if you put down a Blake Shadow clone, switch to another character, like... It stays. Yeah, it stays, and when that character attacks, so does the Shadow clone. Uh-huh. Including how fast they attack. Yeah. So you could just put one down as Blake, swap to Yang, and just take advantage of how quick Yang throws a punch. Yeah, so now now the Shadow Clone is is cutting through things insanely fast. And, uh, yeah, goddamn. Hmm. I bet you're real happy that the B strategy is a really good one. I was wondering whether or not I should say it. You were thinking it real loud. Yeah. But, uh, that is basically the girls. Um... Yeah. I, oh, and, I, uh, I, I feel like I feel like it was unnecessarily mean to Yang. Yang I, I is like... really useful. Y Yang is useful. She's good. She's just situationally good. Yeah, I, I like her semblance as well. Her semblance is all right. It's a it's a it's a big punch on the ground, which at first I didn't really think of too much of. Then I realized, oh wait, if there's a bajillion enemies on you and you hit it, it's like it's a get off me tool. Basically, and... If there's, like, 50 Grim bouncing around on you, you can just punch the ground really hard and, sh and, and it just shreds through them. And, of course, uh, there's an achievement for it, which is Stand your ground and fight. Defeat 25 enemies with Yang's semblance. Which you will probably do if you deal with the godforsaken imp enemies as often as I did. Man, those things were annoying early on. I hate those goddamn <laughs> things. They die in one hit eventually, but they keep jumping in stupid arcs, and there's like 50 of them all the time. Ugh. Anywho, that's the girls. They're awesome. Also, side note, I'm just gonna throw this out here. The artwork for the talking scenes of all the girls are adorable. Oh, I love- especially when Ruby's eyes go, like, sparkly. All star. Yeah, all sparkly. She is next level cute, and I love it. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, basically, the gals are just kind of chilling around, you know, being huntresses and whatnot, and they find them uh, mysterious- Licensed huntresses. You're right, they are licensed, it's true. It's very important. And they find a mysterious orb, and this orb do be making Grim get all cranky, and that ain't good. It so also like, looks so much like a Pokeball. It looks so much like a Pokeball. <laughs> I mean, it's, I not, almost, it's not the I first almost, time Ruby's been inspired by Pokemon. <laughs> no, it's not, but here's the thing. Honestly, and I mean this, when I first saw it, I assumed that the Grim were being, like, coming out of the device. I mean, that, given how they spawn in the scenes, yeah, I, could, yeah, I get the implication. That's why I assumed it, yeah. They, they aren't. <laughs> could you we imagine if Remnant just becomes Pokemon? <laughs> I mean, that is a ROM hack waiting to happen. <laughs> like, you just have Weiss holding one of those orbs, just throws it, like, Beowulf, I choose you! Damn straight. Oh, but, Kara, uh, yeah. Kara gets addicted to Pokemon Go, so she'd be all over that. I am 100% okay with that. But yeah, they, they find themselves an orb, and they're like, we don't know what the heck this thing's all about. So they actually go, and they go and talk to Pietro about it, which was neat. It's nice that he actually, you know, shows up in this. And you can talk to Maria, who's right next to him. Yeah, they're, they're hanging out, because they're both old, you see. Hmm. 
and it's fame. Just give me time. I'll figure out what it is. Just go about your 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 day and go do some some other good girl stuff. In which they find a guy who wears butt armor. Okay, now this is one hundred percent classic way forward humor <laughs> because it it it. This is, I don't think this is the type of thing you would ever see in a actual episode of Ruby. A guy talking at length about his butt armor. <laughs> I mean, I could see that being a thing in anime. In anime, yes. And that's something that way forward, they lean into it a lot more. They get, they're get they inspired by a lot of classic anime and silly jokes like that. Hmm. But like, this is, we're talking about a game where, uh, uh, we're talking about a studio where in one of the Shantae games, like, the entire solution of a puzzle is to rotate a ham to make stink come out of it so you can then suck up the ham stink and then release the ham smells to make a giant dragon drool into a pit of which you then convince two girls to use as a swimming pool. That's the kind of thing we're working with here! For anyone who hasn't played a Shantae game like myself... <laughs> I know. If I you're really confused, was... join the club. <laughs> yeah, no, that is a that is a thing that you do, <laughs> and that's not even the weirdest thing in a Shantae game you do. But that's my, that, that that's the kind of caliber of humor you can anticipate from this sort of thing. And every now and then, you can really feel that influence. Every now and then, I want to give credit to the writers of this game. I know that um, in general, like the the main the main Ruby writers did a lot of work for this, but obviously the, the way forward writers, they, they, they filled in the, the gaps and yeah. the cracks. Yeah, you know, just making sure everything, like, uh, fits well within canon. Actually, absolutely. So, every now and then, when they were given free reign to have a character say something, they kept it in character, yes, but they definitely infused a very specific style of humor that you would expect from that company, and I really enjoyed that. Yeah, but then, like, when it comes to the new characters, like, well, there's no kind of consistency to be had with them. Yeah, so you can just do whatever the hell you feel like with them. Yeah, like this guy um, in his butt armor. It was, yeah, so like, we're never gonna see this dude ever again, so whatever. Also, then there's like, the the lady at the at the front of the, the, the town who has like, it was like, oh, I'm, I, I I lost my, my, I forget what she lost. Oh, she the lost book. Something, the book. She lost the book. And I swear to God, this is just somebody's OC. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, mm, I wonder if I could just sneak in my OC. And, and hey, whatever works, it's fine. She fits in. It's just, to she be, has such an overly elaborate design. To be fair, if I was a way forward, I'd be so tempted to do the same thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, no, no. I would try to do that too. So I, I do not blame them. In fact, I respect it. To be fair, but though, uh, given, given mine, that would be weird. Yeah, well, you know. But, uh, anywho, anywho. So, yeah, the the girls are assigned to go get minerals so that a guy can re reforge his ass armor, essentially, because a, a Grim took a big bite out of it. Now, and during the expedition to get said uh, ore, we are, con we the first of many times, we run into a very, very consistent source of great humor in this game. Penny! Ah, uh, dude, I love the Penny interactions. Like, Penny one of my favorites is, is gonna be, is, like, yeah, go, when yeah. they keep asking her, just like, so what does this do? I do not know. Yeah, <laughs> she just keeps saying it. <laughs> to the point where, like, Weiss has to, like, begin to question whether or not she's, like, malfunctioning. <laughs> it's like, Penny is on an assignment. She doesn't know what, she doesn't know what this thing is that she found. She doesn't know how to make it do what it's supposed to do. Doesn't know what it's for. But she's, she's doing her best. And for the bulk of the game, before these things are relevant, you'll just occasionally find Penny chilling out in all of these locations, not really knowing what it is she's supposed to be doing. And it's really funny. Yeah. Oh, uh, we miss you, Penny. Uh, it's also just, yeah, it's just great seeing Penny again and hearing the salutations. It's very, very cute. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so the gals basically, they get the ore, and they can bring it over to Pietro, and then they get the armor, they hand it off, and they learn about a fellow by the name of Bran Thornmane, who sounds like he might know some things about stuff. Hmm. 
So they 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 go out and they uh you know they well they, well they hear basically about a grim attacking a town, so they obviously go to do there and, and deal with that. And it turns out to be a giant honking goddamn elephant. Yeah, that's when I was like, okay, so this is when the Goliath fight happens. Yeah. Also, uh, Ruby finally got to kill an elephant. I mean, or at least to fight one. Remember? <laughs> oh yeah, one wanted- too. She was like, let's kill it. Yeah, no, that's one of my favorite Ruby moments. It's like, wow, let's kill it. <laughs> no, it's very old and very smart, but uh, the gals are strong enough now, and they do fight it, and if you're particularly incompetent, such as I, you'll maybe possibly lose, because yeah. it's, 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 it's kind of hard to get behind it when it decides to charge. Yeah, I remember like when I was playing the demo at RTX, the amount of people in front of me I saw die. Uh, well, it makes me feel a little bit better. I was just uh, like, because... man, I'm gonna be I'm gonna try my best to make sure that doesn't happen. I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna beat this the thing. On. Yeah. Um, so, because Ru- Ruby's dash uh, before it gets upgraded isn't enough to get behind it on its own. So basically, you need to run to the back of the the arena, jump on a platform to then jump over it while it's charging at you. And if you don't recognize its charging animation soon enough. Then you're you're gonna get hit. Mm. Yeah, but I mean they do have healing items, and I think didn't they remove one from the demo? Because like the, I they still know. have I the chocolate the bar. Demo. Yeah, I, I didn't play the demo, so I don't know what, what would have been in there if they removed uh, anything. Oh, and the other one was a can of soda. Yeah, I don't think there's soda in this now. I mean, there is one. There is one. Yes. Do you know if that was the same one though? No, it was like, not. Did they use the same. No, oh, it would have been funny if they used the same asset. Oh, that would have been perfect, though. It would have. Uh, and anyway, just very quickly, very quickly, I just want to point out that at the beginning of the the fight against this uh, the, the Goliath or the Mammoth or whatever it is, um, Ruby starts out the, the before the enemy shows up. It's like, now that we're Huntresses, does it seem like Grim are more intimidated by us? Giant honking elephant falls from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> and Yang's like, pretty sure it's just you. <laughs> so they fight it and they beat it. But it ain't dead. And then a bunch of new gals show up, and they're kind of assholes. <laughs> and they just annihilate the damn thing. They do. They've got some crazy powers, and you kind of need to, like, actually Google what their powers are sometimes. Uh, a couple of them are obvious, but less of them are in- 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 as obvious as others. Yeah, it, and it looks like a couple of them can basically just do the same thing. But yeah, that's then once you look up, yeah. like, oh, what this person's semblance actually is, yeah, okay, that fills team, in the gaps. This is team. This is team Briar and or Briar, uh, like, a Briar. But like, uh, the, 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 however yeah. it's said, yeah, because uh, that's a it's another it's a it's another story. So it, it checks out storybook stuff. But uh, their leader has the power to copy other people's powers, so that's why it looks like they're doubling up on said power. <laughs> But yeah, they basically jump in, kick ass, uh, kill the elephant. Ruby says, "Wow, you guys are awesome!" And they're all like, "Ha ha, y'all are nerds!" and leave. <laughs> and it's just like, well, damn, don't much care for them. Yeah, honestly, and to be honest, like when they were first shown off, like when the game was announced, that's basically how I thought their interaction was gonna go. Mm-hmm. I was just yeah, like, well, they, they got that look about them. I was just like, okay, so these girls are evil. Like, gonna have to fight them at some point. Mm-hmm. Regardless, uh, Bram Thornmane shows up and, and shoes them out of there. And they're like, and he's like, hey, you know what you should do? Give me back that, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, you just, just, just hand over that orb. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna look at it. And they're like, yeah, okay. And then they do. Hmm. Nothing, and, uh, uh, suspicious about that. Absolutely not. So then the girls head back to Atlas. They want to check in with Ironwood before he goes insane. Just got to throw that out there. And his new lieutenant. Yep, the new lieutenant, Olive Harper, who we've never seen before and I'm sure won't play any role in anything whatsoever. Surely not. Surely not. She says, hey, you know, uh, the, the you know Ironwood ain't here. Go off and, and do your thing. They do their they thing. Go and, and they help they out the meet. Aesops. Yay, I'm happy to see... One of them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Look, it's an unspoken but very blatant um, 
uh, thing that, knowing how things are gonna go in the show for all of these characters, having to help out a few of them is awkward. Little bit. <laughs> Mostly Harriet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Harriet. I get okay, yeah, I, I, I guess Elm and Vine are, they're fine, I guess. Once they, you know, shape up. And Clover was always fine. But anyway, they're basically all off on their own missions, and Team Ruby are assigned to essentially help them. Elm just straight up tells them to go get her soda, which is rude. Well, because her work's already done. I know, but it's still rude. Yeah. Weiss asks if they're the freaking caterers. They are not. I like that. It is. Okay, just as an aside, Weiss is sassy as hell in this game, and I love it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh... By the way, as you, like, go around Atlas, that's when the human enemies, uh, start showing up. Yeah, in it, I, I was a very rude awakening when I went into this the next level, and I saw a human. And I hadn't fought in humans up to that point, so I was like, are you an enemy? Yes, you are! <laughs> I, I had something similar to that, which I meant, well, I think you also had. Yeah, I was like, oh, We'll get to that. Okay. Goddamn. Uh... Yeah, including, but, uh, like, yeah. one guy with, like, a massive club arm. Yeah, he has a literal club for an, a whole-ass arm, and he slams the ground, and he makes rocks fly out. That cannot be practical in everyday life. It is not. I had a whole-ass I had a whole ass soliloquy about that in the Let's Play. Yeah. I mean... It's like, I'm sure that's pretty handy in a fight, but in the day-to-day, -day, I, I hope that thing's detachable. <laughs> yeah, like Yang's arm. Yeah, otherwise, ooh, that ain't good. But, uh, yeah, the long and short of it, just to, to breeze by a little bit, the Aesops basically, they have their various things they want the Ruby Girls to do, and they do it, and they it's mostly just kind of, you know, small missions to really get you allocated to the controls and how everything works and to give you opportunities to get stronger, stuff yeah. like that. Well, especially considering, like, after you do Harriet, uh, you get your first upgrade, which is Ruby's. Yeah, and Ruby can dash even farther, which is so useful. Yeah, and you can, like, uh, cross wider gaps. Yeah, a girl can basically fly. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pretty dang swell. But yeah, it, you know, get find uh, Marrow's goggles, get Elma Soda, uh, find, like, discarded technology for Harriet. Vine wants you to find relics for uh, ancient civilization. And it's really funny because he's Vine is very invested in what they could all possibly mean and all of Team Ruby are deeply sassy about the entire thing. It's like, mm, nope. Man, <laughs> we don't think that's what you... We don't think that is what you think it is. This crack in the middle represents this. I think that's because Ruby dropped it. Yeah. It's like, oh, you know, these markings could be... I was like, I think that's just cat hair. <laughs> but I, I also just... I find says, as your history lessons have no doubt taught you, Tumak Ruins is a formal remnant heritage site. And Ruby just very brazen was like, nope, I had no idea. <laughs> and I love it. Hmm. This game does not shy away from being legitimately funny, and I appreciate that greatly. One thing that gave me a massive laugh, uh, despite it being, yeah. like, the most minuscule thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Marrow has the soda the Elm wants, and uh -huh. it's people like grape soda. Which is a, uh, a long time Rooster Teeth in joke. Yeah, which was in Volume 2. It was, yes. So it is an in brand thing for the Ruby universe. Yeah. Let's see. I laughed uh, way too much when I saw that. Yeah. Okay, so if we're just gonna talk about like things we enjoy as we kind of breeze through it, because there's not a lot of story in this game, so we'll, we'll get to the next plot beat real soon. But just, I can't, I don't know when in the game they happen, because it's been a while since I played. But, um, two of my favorite moments is one of the, it, both of them involve Ruby and Weiss just being hilarious together. I think I know what one of them's gonna be. Yeah, well, one of them is basically, uh, like, so they're giving them the rundown, and Ruby's like, if this is about all of the cookies being, <laughs> all of the cookies vanishing, um, uh, it, Weiss did it. <laughs> And Weiss takes offense and like, no, I didn't. It's like, and she, she also responds, is that where they all went? Implying that Weiss at least attempted to get a cookie and could not. <laughs> Which is cute as hell. Another one 
is where basically they're trying to figure out, um, you know, dust shipments and 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 and, and supply chain stuff and Ruby like, like criminal stuff. like underground. Uh, yeah, stuff. criminal underground stuff and and Ruby's all like, maybe it's your dad and Ru and Weiss is just like, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't say that, but she basically says that. Oh! Another thing I can bring up that I haven't had a chance to say. Whenever the girls save or finish a level, they do an absolutely adorable little team-up pose maneuver thing, and it just makes me happy. Yeah, and they also do the same pose whenever you find a chest, and I love this detail. Uh, Ruby and Yang's. Mm -hmm. There are those, there are their victory poses from Cross Tag Battle. Yeah, they are. Which, so it's, I love it's, that. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a really neat thing. So, but um, basically, yeah, they're trying to, they have to figure out, uh, there's like an underground supply chain of, 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 of criminal activities going on, and they learn about a guy named Amancio Glass. So, and Who, it's like, Weiss is like, like this dude is oh, like, he's, he, he's, into, he's into stuff that like, you know, even my dad doesn't go near and stuff like that. And uh, I think I talked over you. Is there something you wanted to say? I'm trying to remember the voice actor's name. Uh, he's voiced in Death Battle a couple times. He was Joker yeah. and uh, Goro, I think. Yeah, I believe so. Yes, but um, yeah, he, he he voices Amancio in this, and he's just this. He's just a a a, 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 a absolute numpty. And we get one of the few animated cutscenes in the game. Oh, actually, before that. <laughs> Uh, before that, Amancio's like, Do you wish to do Basil? Do you not all know who I am, what I'm capable of? And Ruby just says, Mao, nothing good, I imagine. <laughs> like, really bad stuff, I'd assume. But yeah, then 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 we get a cutscene of, of the girl striking a, a badass battle pose and him just... One of which! <laughs> I, I still gotta comment on Blake's. It's just like... Blake's makes no sense. Give her that. Well, man, uh, she flexible. Yeah, uh, Yang, Ruby, and Weiss all, they, they strike very understandable battle poses. Blake kinda contorts herself so that her, her left leg is way up into the air, and like, her entire body is like pivoted to the side. And I think and just her seems... neck actually turns like past one of her shoulders. A little bit it does, yes. So, it's, it's funny to look at, but yeah, so anyway, he... Amancio runs the hell away, and it's really funny. Also, the, the, well, the girls are obviously disappointed, and it's probably one of the damn funniest moments of the game. Yeah, they're just weirded out, and Blake's like, well, this is awkward. And it was. And then there's just some kid there with popcorn. <laughs> Which is just so weird. It's like that kid like, in Incredibles. Yeah. <laughs> the one that's on his uh, tricycle. Yeah, uh, he was waiting for something interesting to happen. He thought it would, and then he, he, he gets bored and gives up. And then a giant mech falls through the goddamn building, and the girls fight and obviously beat the crap out of it. And Ruby's all, oh, not another giant mech thing. Yeah, also, it's the... Free, it's the this is another huge... This is definitely... Uh, WayForward are really good at naming their bosses into some things that are, things that are funny, and it really shows through with this one, with it being the glass cannon. <laughs> That's a that is a perfect name for a weapon. That is. So they obviously obliterate it, and well, yeah, Amancio basically just says that you know he's just the the delivery guy. He doesn't really actually know where any of the stuff is going or what it's being used for. So didn't really help out too much. <laughs> but um, so they 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 head back, and they eventually they bump into Crow, who's just kind of chilling after stealing Winter's sword. <laughs> For whatever esoteric reason, I guess just so we could have Winter show up, I guess. But uh, Crow basically says he tossed out a bunch of surveillance drones all over the damn place, and hey ho, if you can go and find those messes, I might be able to triangulate uh, where uh, the the guy who's getting all of this stuff is, who is like a he's like a civil servant guy. At least he tries. He, he says he is, but he's. Very clearly doing some some messed up stuff. I have a lot to say about the uh, cutscenes with that guy. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to them. But uh, first, I'm sure you want to talk about um, Mikado. Ah, uh, yes. Um, because this is where you meet her. Yeah. Um, mouse girl. Yeah. Uh, mouse fauna skull, who is mm -hmm. very, very enamored with Blake. If that's, <laughs> is that the right word? She, and she's a she's a fan. Yeah, she's a fan. She, she, 
Like, she thinks Blake is really, really cool because she's out there being awesome and badass and flaunting the fact that she's a faunus and isn't afraid of anything. All that jazz and... Yeah. Yeah, and I think Yang even mentions she flat that, out, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Blake's fan club, which I guess is what we're calling it. Yeah, that's called uh, that. Has a new member. Yeah. I don't know if they did that on purpose, but I appreciated it because, like, yep, a lot of people are into Blake. <laughs> yeah, we had a whole last conversation about this. Just like, of Team Ruby, Blake has the most people who are into her. Yeah, but I think the, like the number is like five or six at this point. Okay, if you include all official Ruby media, mm -hmm. uh, then yeah, it's six because you've got. That is yeah. Uh, Yang, Sun, Adam, Ilya, uh, Mikado, and uh, you, it's okay. that version of Aquaman from the crossover. Yeah, yeah. It's it just you can in fact include Aquaman, which is just weird. Uh, but obviously, if you don't count like that because it's plainly yeah. non-canon, then yeah, it's only yeah. five. It's only five, but that's still five people into her. Yeah. You know how many people are into Yang? Just Blake! Yeah, just the one! <laughs> Which is weird, because that was like... Like, when you see the characters for the first time, you'd assume, you know? <laughs> you'd assume that'd be the character that everyone would be into. Mm. Go figure! Even Weiss has more, um... Has, had more people in, in infatuated. Which, as she should, because obviously she is the best, but... You know, you, it's just surprising to learn. Hey, of Team Ruby, our girls also have the most people interested in them. Yep, which... There you go. I'm both glad that enough people understand how great they are, but also I want them to not. <laughs> I mean, one of them's Neptune. Yeah, and I hate that guy. I mean, I guess if you were feeling generous, you could count him for Yang, but... That I went don't. nowhere fast. That one got, like, shot down in, like, the mi in a matter of, like, three minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and say no. It was just the one line and nothing came from it. Yeah. So, but yeah, Neptune is barely a, a sentient life form, so whatever. Basically. Yeah. So, anyway, the girls got to do a number of things to find the various surveillance drones, like, give, uh, Winter her... her sa well, if you give Winter her saber back, she'll teach Weiss how to use her dust more efficiently so she can use a, an upgrade a, and use, make two platforms. Which I like. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fitting that that comes a, from her sister. Yeah, I actually really like that that's how, how that came about. But uh, yeah, basically run around all over the damn place, try to find those surveillance drones. Uh, run into a guy named Moss Bear Bear or Burr Bear, whatever, who is um, definitely insane. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He is absolutely insane. He thinks he is the uh, the mayor of a town, of which is actually a cave that he lives in with no one else. He he has a he has a bird um, that clearly left of its own accord, but he yeah, he wanted he wants you to go get it. <laughs> oh yeah, this dude. Uh, I'll, I'll have you know. I'll it... have you know, folks come from. Wide, uh, long and far to find to get to this place, and Blake just says, "I find that hard to believe." Hmm. Blake ain't having any of this nonsense. That that yeah, was basically want... my mood when I was talking to him. Yeah, and uh, um, by the way, I just had want... this for because you mentioned He's... like the fact that you want he wants you to go and get his bird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just thinking of a whiplash from Iron Man too. <laughs> just, I want my bird. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, yeah, I want he, my bud. My bud. But yeah, he, he wants the he wants the girls to find his goshack, which hilariously, uh, three of them don't even seem convinced exists. But Ruby is actually legitimately uh, moved by the plight of this man <laughs> and wants to help him out. So I mean, if anyone will. was gonna be, it would be Ruby. Yes. And uh, they're just kind of hoping that he has information. He doesn't, but he did have a drone. So, hey, it was a complete waste of time. Mm. Go around, find even more stuff. Uh, if you get, if you go to a, like a lost and found, or with 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 winter. No, no, no. Uh, that's if you go to the dust mine, get a sample, 
Right. And then she'll be like, oh, by the way, uh, this was found in Lost and Found. Doesn't it belong right. to that uh, Fauna Skull? Even though Blake's, like, right there. So, like, what she the hell, Winter? She is standing right there. Like, <laughs> thanks for that. But, yeah, she has a... Um, I like Blake's, Blake's response, though. Just the whole, uh, I have a name, by the way. Yeah, so at least it didn't slip by unnoticed. Hmm. But uh, apparently Blake has spare ribbons this whole time? Go figure. Yeah. I remember that was, like, and one of Erin's uh, headcanons. Like, she just has, like, a drawer with them, and they're, like, all lined up so neatly. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, they, they take that so they can give it to Mikado, who wants to hide her, her, her mouse ears. Yeah, but... But Blake, but Blake convinces her, don't do that, be proud of being a fondness, yo. And she's all, you know what, I will, and you know what? I, if it's cool with you, I'll keep this and just, like, yeah, remember how awesome you are. Maybe it'll be a headband. And it's through uh, Mikado that uh, we get Blake's upgrade, and boy howdy, she becomes even more busted. She sure as all hell does. Um, no, oh, that, that's another thing about her I want to bring up. Sure. Like, because I remember, like, just reading the dialogue and, like, looking at her name and just thinking... And you saw Mika. <laughs> yeah, I went, ah, so close. So close. That would have been hilarious. It really would have. Although... I have to admit, like, okay, her jacket isn't too far off, and she has like a, well, you call it a band-aid, a plaster on her cheek, which is where the character I'm thinking of has a scar. I mean, it's the opposite one, but still. Yeah, no, I, you, you, you're left to ponder. You ponder and such things. They also have a scarf. Hmm. Can't help but wonder if that was an inspiration. It's possible. Just like how there's a human enemy in a uh, mantle, which you were wondering if it was inspired by Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> it's I don't know, man. It's it's a girl. She has a very specific hairstyle that can pass off as giant ears. She wields a giant wrench and can throw it like a boomerang. I don't know, I'm just saying. Like, comparisons are there. By the way, um... <laughs> okay, tying into Death Valley, I guess, because, hey, it's relevant. Go ahead. A combat... Look, okay, well, Blake is just in the game. Yeah. Uh, commands from our favorite episodes might have got referenced. <laughs> so, there you go. Maybe. It's impossible to know. I mean, sometimes... The thing is... I don't remember the very specific thing that they referenced to, but they re they made a direct reference to an anime somewhere in this, like a real-world anime, and that's just something WayForward does. They're very okay with making references and homages. Like, again, in a Shantae game, you just straight up find a guy who is, by all intents and purposes, He-Man. <laughs> like, acts like straight up 80s He-Man. <laughs> nice. He, like, when he transforms, literally, like, the only thing that changes is his hair color. Like... <laughs> yeah. Plus, I mean, it, it's Ruby. Everyone's basically inspired by somebody. That works. Like... Anywho. Blake is Beauty yeah. and the Beast, Ruby is the Little Red Riding Hood, Weiss is Snow White, and Yang is Goldilocks. It's true. So, yeah, the girls find all the surveillance drones, they triangulate it, and they are able to, uh, find the location of one Hanlon Fifestone. Yep, the uh, next boss, and, okay, I say boss, it's a fight, because yeah. when you watch that cutscene, Blake is the only boss there. <laughs> <laughs> so, this dude, okay, so as it turns out, those orbs from before were full of fear? And the thing about that is, well, how does that work? Well, somebody must have the semblance required to extract emotions out of people, which ordinarily you wouldn't think would be an extraordinarily helpful ability. But uh, this guy found a way to make it work for him. <laughs> yeah, like, you see him just, like, abusing a, a young Fauna Skull. Yeah, and terrifying the crap out of her so she can he can rip the fear out of her. Out of her face! Yeah, it's very dark looking, I ain't gonna lie. Like, Jesus. And guess how many, and guess how Team Ruby feel about witnessing this? Well, the very first thing that happens is uh, Blake and Yang drop kicking the guy. Yeah, no, it's really cool, I like it. Basically, Blake kicks him to sort of open him up, and then Yang, like, 
straight up like double leg drop kicks him through a brick wall. And you know, it is they check on the girl, lost. make sure she's okay. Yeah. And when they ask like, like, is he gone? Blake takes charge and is like, not gone enough. Yeah, so then they go off and they fight him, and dude sure does love spinning. Yeah. Dude has Manian doubles his way around the area and it leaves I would him have gone wide open. <laughs> like, it, it, he, he leaves himself a sitting duck a lot. Hmm. So, it's not the hardest fight in the world. Yeah, and after you beat him, you saw whatever comes next is your fault as he pushes the button on a remote. Yeah, and Team Ruby decide to not bring that up to the people carrying and... this guy off to prison. <laughs> And Ruby's all, huh, I don't know, maybe he was just turning on the TV. Ruby, you're being a big dork. Ruby, wait, no. Wait. You're lucky you're freakishly adorable, I swear to God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you weren't so damn cute, oh, I'd be rather cross with your silly words. <laughs> but yeah, no, basically he just triggered a bunch of those orbs all over the damn place, and all manner of, of heck is getting unleashed upon the entire area. Yeah. So, one yeah, thing you go, I, you go, yeah. One thing I kind of appreciate about it is just like, uh, while that's going on, until you take out the last of the orbs, mm -hmm. the whole time, whenever you look at the map, it's like got smoke. The music's different, and it's yeah, just like, no, oh yeah, it, things really are dire right now. It's like, oh absolutely. Yeah. Damn, that's a nice detail. Yeah. So the girl's next major quest is to. Go to levels you already were, but use the upgraded versions of your abilities in order to find the uh, secretly hidden orb so you can stop the Grim from attacking the damn place everywhere. Yeah. As a byproduct of that, you run across uh, a lady that you found earlier in the game uh, who was mining for certain stuff, and she finds combustion dust. And Yang's and... all, I want it. And she was like, I, I want that. I think I know what I can do with that. And that upgrades her semblance to be able to shatter um, iron boulders instead of just the, the giant rock ones, which is what her semblance is primarily used for. Uh, or as she puts it, uh, feels so strong she could take down mountains. Look, if she ever does, that would really help us out. <laughs> Yang, if you ever want to just punch a mountain so hard that it turns into dust, that'd be great. Jesus, that'd be a sight. <laughs> It would. But, uh, Imagine yeah, if girls... it's just like, they're, they're trying to intimidate somebody, they don't believe the girls are that strong, Yang does not look away, punches a mountain right behind her, it just turns into dust. I'm totally okay with this. And, man, the face you could have on the guy afterwards. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I see. Alright, well, I'm not doing any of that. But, uh, yeah, so the girls, uh, they run around and they hunt down all of the various orbs that were hidden. And then they're told that they have a, uh, they head back to Ironwood and Olive. And, and they're like, hey, I kind of want to, oh, yeah. I want to call out Ruby, who's just like, they destroy three. And she's yeah. like, and we're done. It's like, it's Ruby like, does no, one more. No, I'm pretty, you know, Weiss is like, pretty sure I count three. It's like, oh, can't it be, can't that have been the fourth? Ruby feeling lazy today. <laughs> But they're able to convince her that it is for the greater good. And she's like, oh, great, okay. Good. Don't make me throw rocks. <laughs> Anywho, they head back to Ironwood and Olive, and they said, we got a transmission from our intelligence. And, uh, yeah, Five Stone ain't the one behind them orbs. And they have to... And they, uh, they have to deal with that, and they have to get onto a big old train. And they're like, oh, cool, a train. That sounds like a time that will result in us having to get into a massive fight. It wasn't why so, like... You better not have just jinxed us. Yeah, and, uh, so... <laughs> and Ruby saw... Oh! But, you know, wouldn't it also be cool if the train was full of bunnies? <laughs> Plot twist, there's velvet. <laughs> yeah, no, that would have been the goddamn funniest thing. <laughs> it would have made no sense, but I would have been okay with it. Funny enough, uh, Velvet's dad uh, works in Atlas. Well, there you go. But, uh, so yeah, the girls get on the train... They start on the top of the train for some reason as it's moving. Not sure what the deal with that yeah. is. Okay, but, um, the so this is the part that threw me for a loop. Like, yeah. one of the first things I did was come across an Atlas soldier. And, you know, we see those, like, in Atlas Academy, just like, yeah. you know, in the oh, game. Yeah, so yeah, I was you like... See, you see them all over the place. I was like, 
you're a friend, right? And then he shoots me, and I'm just like, what the hell? Well, screw you then. Yeah, no, the the Elysian robots and soldiers just start trying to kill you out of freaking nowhere. By the way, they all have the same weakness. Just go for the knees. Yeah, if you crouch, uh, they can't do anything. Yeah, no, they uh, cannot hit you. Even the they, they they do not adjust their aim. They do not walk forward or backward. They just stand there and shoot dead ahead. Yeah, Un even the robots with like the blade arms, they just slash, and if you crouch, they miss you. Yeah, so that's fun, and it gets real embarrassing. The fact that I uh, definitely got hit by them way too much until I realized their weakness. <laughs> But, uh, it is what it is. Anyway, the Ruby Girls are like, Okay, so what the actual hell is even going on? Like, why are they attacking us? There's gotta be some kind of misunderstanding. And then we get another boss-ass animated scene of all the girls kicking some serious ass. Yeah, I like this scene a lot. It is. But then there's a bit of an oopsie-poopsie with the, um... Uh, <laughs> with the train, uh, going off of a cliff. Yep. And uh, the girls are, they, they, they take it surprisingly well. They uh, they did not get hit by any part of the train. Luckily. I guess they got, I guess they got flung really damn hard. But it's also and... not the first time they've been flying off a train. No, it's not. In fact, At I one even, point, I, they I, just get used to it. In fact, I even straight up like brought this up with uh, my friend Nightstar. Uh, Team Ruby ha and trains don't have a great relationship. Nah. I want to say this is like the fourth time a ride on a train has gone poorly for at least one of them. Okay, you know what? If for whatever reason there was like, I don't know, like a spin-off sequel or whatever, uh -huh. like, can there just be a direct reference to just never ride the train? Yeah. I, I mean, if any of them didn't ever want to do it again, I would not blame them in any shape, way, or form. I, I don't know. I just think but, that'd be funny. Yeah, so Weiss, uh, she, she's groggy, and she looks up, and she thinks she sees Team Briar, but then she blinks, and they are Briar. And then they just vanish. So that's interesting. And then, and then uh... Blake and, Blake. But then Blake and Yang see Ruby get stuck in a snowbank, and her little legs are just kicking. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just too funny. It's adorable, and it's funny, and I appreciate it. It's like, oh, we had a sad or dark moment, but that's okay, we're having a funny moment to balance it out. That's how you do it! But, uh, yeah, so Weiss is pretty sure that Team Briar are, in fact, here. Briar, damn it. Yeah, uh, whichever. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, the point is, pretty sure they're there. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. <laughs> the freaking apathy are casual enemies in this game, and that really threw me for a loop. Yeah, that threw me for a loop as well. It's like, oh, Jesus! <laughs> like, they're just casually hanging out here. Okay! Luckily, they don't have the greatest range, so if you just stay out of there, you, you're gonna be fine, but wow, I did not expect that of all things to just kind of casually show up. And they have a lot of health. They really do. They are a tanky sort, which is weird. Hmm. <laughs> you think they you think they would have been a little bit, um, a, a little, a little more fragile, but yeah. I By digress. The, way, uh, the further you get into the game, the more, like, tougher enemies do start spawning, so, well... Yeah. Yeah, you can just do the method of just, like, Blake plus a Shadow Clone to, like, tear through stuff. It's always good, but it does take more effort, yes. Yeah. This game is not, in fact, super duper easy. I wouldn't, Although, call, it, I I, wouldn't call it really, really hard, but it's not a breeze. It is one of those where I would say, in a way, it gets easier as it goes, but that's if yeah. you, like, level yourself up, you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and yeah. What actually kind of weirds me out is I remember seeing like, this post from somebody, I can't remember who it was, who said that they died like so many times in the first chapter. Which and... is mildly understandable because I mean, that's when the characters are at their weakest and you also barely know what you're doing. Yeah, and I'm just, I, I, I think they were just like saying about how they like weren't impressed with aspects of the game and them dying a lot was like something that had to do with it and I'm just thinking to myself, also, I'm develop the developers fault you suck. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, get good. I know that. I know that. Uh, that sounds, but like, legit, just get good. Yeah. Like, anywho, I, I might have died like I don't know, like a couple of times, but I not that much. Especially not the like first a, freaking level. Jeez. Yeah, I want to say maybe I died like a total of five or six times. I don't remember exactly, 
But at some but point, I, I, you... I was also live commentating the whole time, and that's scientifically proven to make you even worse at games. <laughs> Because yeah. your attention is divided. Plus, you can buy healing items, you can buy revival rings. I tried to not use revival rings. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, if you buy so many of them, there's, like, no worry. I mean, by the end of the game, I had so much money that I literally maxed out the inventory of all items except revival rings. <laughs> so, that was pretty cool. But, uh, the girls go through the a big old temple, and they, they do find Team uh, Briar. And it turns out... They aren't actually evil. Yeah, they were just misled by somebody. Yeah, but who could they have possibly been misled by? Well, there's no time for that because they're the next boss fight. Now- I do like that you fight all four of them. I do, and they switch out just like Team Ruby do. And for my go of it, I decided that anytime they switched to a character, I would switch to a corresponding character, and I fought the boss fight that way. Which I thought was cool. Yeah, I, I really, I, it was entirely unnecessary, but it was really cool and I liked it. So, like, whenever Drill Girl was out, I was Weiss. Whenever Fire Girl was out, I was Gang. It was just neat. I, it was a neat little mini challenge that I put upon myself that I liked a lot. Yeah. Uh, uh, struggling to remember her name, but, like, the girl who can, like, copy uh, semblances. Bianca Prisma. Okay, yeah, that's it. Um, that is her name. Beyond? Do you, okay, think, there are, do you yes. think it would have been cool if she also copied the semblance of a Team Ruby member? That would have been dope. Like, I don't know, if you play as in Blake, she a, does the Shadow game. Clone strategy. Yeah, in a more extensive game, I feel like that would be the type of thing an enemy would do. Yeah, like, if but this also, game had okay. more had even more time to be worked on, like, I could see that being added. But yeah, okay, so Team Briar, or Briar are Bianca Prisma... Ivy Thickety, who is voiced by a, um, a, a gal, Anna Lee. She's a VTuber. She's a, she does a lot of really awesome, uh, anime music covers, including Red Like Roses and Mirror Mirror. Oh, I remember you sending me those. Yeah, so that was her singing those, and she's really good, and, uh, she, I, I, I'm glad she was able to get into this, even in such a limited capacity. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's Ivy, uh, that, the, the Thickety. Then there's Roan Ashwood, and it's real hard to... There we go, Ruta Tillerroot, because, you know, she has drills. <laughs> of course her name is Tiller. <laughs> yeah. By the way, if we're shouting out our voice actors who go into this, I believe another one, like, he voices one of the enemies, like, throughout the levels. Uh, Nicholas Andrew Louie. Hmm, yeah. Who voices so many people in Death Battle, oh my god generally the ones that lose. I mean, he's had wins. Like, it took a long time for it, though. Danny Phantom being his first one, and they got Broly, and Madara. Yeah, and, yeah no, the, the streak is broken now, but for a long time, there was a losing streak. Oh, God. Yeah, I remember, like, uh, talking to him about it, and, um, like, uh, when he got the script for uh, Ben 10 vs. Green Lantern, like, it was at this point, he's, like, reading it, and he just goes to Marissa. Again? <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. I just thought Anywho. that was funny. Yeah, so uh, Team Ruby beat up Team uh, Brayer and... Brayer, god damn. Anyway, uh, wait, whichever. I know, but it's bugging me. Anyway, the point is they beat him up and they learned that basically they're actually the Guardians of Arrowfell. And they're That's like, what's it? Yeah, yeah, title drop. And what's an Arrowfell? Arrowfell is basically a... Uh, a compound where experimental weaponry was developed, but it was all decided to be way too messed up to actually use for anything. So they just kind of locked it all up and hoped nobody would ever find the shed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they were based that, that that team was basically assigned to protect it. And well, now Team Ruby need to actually hunt them all down again in order to get the four keys in order to open up the place to get into Arrowfell. And this is where Penny comes in, because remember those gates that you couldn't yeah, open? The, yeah, well, now she can, and all of them are funny. Yeah, like... And, and, and one of them, she gets performance anxiety, and she needs them to look away. <laughs> that was adorable. It really was. As Weiss continuously gets more and more fed up with her nonsense. And Ruby's, because, well, 
when they get the last one, Ruby talks about, but what if I threw it? Oh, yeah. And I'm That's just like, Ruby, That's why are you this way? That's the reference. That's the reference. Remember, was, they, a direct reference to an anime. Oh, yeah. I remember 100%. you sending me that clip. Yeah, this is 100% a reference. It has to absolutely be a reference to Azamanga Daya, where the character Tomo just grabs and eats someone's house key. <laughs> Before any of them get into the house. And they have no idea why she did that. Neither did she. She thought it would be funny. And then as they're all, like, rooting around in the, in the forest to try to find the dang thing, she's like, wouldn't it be funny if I was the one that found it and I threw it again? Oh my god. <laughs> it's amazing. I refuse to believe that's not a reference. Anyway. But yeah, I was like, wouldn't it be funny if I just threw this key? No. <laughs> and I think no, in that please. same scene, Penny's all like, I can't do it. Wait, really? No, I thought I would pull a ruby. Yeah, and she's like, I, no. It's like, nope, can't do it. I was making a joak. Good job, Penny. Many, many lulls. <laughs> so, yeah, the girls have to hunt down all the members of Team Briar, and uh, each one is able to basically convince uh, one of the members to, to be chill about the whole thing. Yeah, which I like. I did and... like that. All of them basically got to have a, a conversation. <laughs> and I think... I don't know Ooh. if it's just a... The grand, the grand Mac Daddy of coincidences, but Ivy is con is primarily convinced by Weiss, and I believe that her voice actor actually has a fondness for Weiss. So <laughs> that I don't know if that's I don't know that for positive, but I, I believe that is the case. And if it is a coincidence, well, that's neat. <laughs> uh, I think something that accidentally happened with me is um, so the one who Yang talks to, I was yes. uh, playing as Blake at the point. Oh, yeah. The one Blake talks to, I was playing as Yang. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Uh, Ivy, I was playing as Ruby. Of course you were. And for the one Ruby talks to, I was playing as Ice. That almost sounds like you did it on purpose. I swear to God I didn't. Right, anyway. Oh yeah, something we forgot to bring up. The reason the Atlizian robots and soldiers were attacking Team Ruby is because Olive, the character that was made for this game, uh, is a traitor. <laughs> Who would have guessed? Yeah, and in fact, uh, they're all basically working for uh, Bram Bram Thornmane. So, I at the beginning of the game, I was like, well, I don't really trust any of the characters that were made for this game exclusively, and I was right to do so. I mean, basically. I was like, well, I'm just going to assume you're all evil unless proven otherwise. <laughs> and the greater majority of them were, in fact, bad guys. Yeah. Uh, so you go into Aerofell. Oh, before we get to that, fight. I oh, do kind of want to call out a take I have seen about just the one line Yang has. Oh, sure, go ahead. Oh, that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, about, like, well, because Team Briar say, like, they're basically sisters at this point. Yeah, uh, Team Ruby is. Yeah, and, you know, Yang comments on uh, that as well, and I saw a take that was to do with Bumblebee, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, that was not the point. It really wasn't. It was there was no shipping involved in this. She was just saying that she considers all of Team Ruby her sisters, and it was funny because Ruby actually is her sister. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm remembering uh, Ragnar finding that out. Like you two are sisters. Yeah. Says the I guy mean, whose brother be, is to, Jin. To, <laughs> I know, but to be fair, to be fair. Ruby and Yang really don't look anything alike. They really don't. <laughs> they really don't. Unless their unless their parents are literally right there in the room with them, you would never be able to tell initially. Yeah, like they if you saw, have, they don't even have the same last name. If you saw Ty and Summer, you'd be like, okay, now it makes sense. Which is really weird because then you have to bring in Raven to the situation. Ty Yang's got a type. He likes he li he likes uh, dark haired girls. Let's just, that's just my guess. It's crazy, man. But anyway, the point is sisterhood. It's cute. Hmm. But yeah, they all jump into Aerofell and they get it with all the keys, and then you go through a big ass gauntlet of all manner of enemies. Yep, and so many ambushes. Yeah, and you bump into Olive, and she's all like, "Damn." I mean, I thought I was doing the right thing, and it really didn't work out, so 
Damn. All right, I'm just gonna go turn myself in now. <laughs> also, here's some skill points I had in my locker. Yeah, she just had a, a big pile of skill points, yeah. which are actual physical, tangible objects. <laughs> oh, I do want to just uh, mention, I yeah. got this achievement as early on as I could. Yeah. Uh, hang on, let me just pull up the name for it. Sure, because uh, I have something to say yeah. about it too. Uh, quite the collection, mm -hmm. which is hold 10 skill points at once. Right. So, fun fact. There's a character in Atlas Academy, one of the Nameless Guards, who he'll teach you about skill points, which is weird because you probably already have figured out how they work by that point, but he'll continue to talk about them for basically the entirety of the game. And, like, at one point, he'll literally just say, I mean, if you find them, be sure to use them all uh, as soon as you get them. Although, I mean, I suppose, like, he, like paramountedly, he just, he just flat out says, well, I suppose if you held, like, a bunch of them all at once, that'd be quite the achievement. <laughs> like... <laughs> Subtle! Yeah. By the way, that's also another thing that made the game a bit challenging for me at the start. It's just that I wasn't upgrading myself. Yeah, that would definitely be a problem. Yeah. And once you know, I would imagine if you started this game knowing exactly what all of the girls are best at and you focused on them and, like, maxed out those things. Like, if you maxed out, like, 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 Ruby's melee attack... Yeah, Weiss is ranged, you know, stuff like that, mm -hmm. then you'd probably be able to get a huge advantage right from the get-go. Yeah, I was just upgrading all the goals, like, evenly. I was just like... Yeah, that, yeah no, that's okay. what I did. Okay, obviously yeah. I started with Blake. Like, Yeah, I start, and I started with Weiss, obviously. Okay, I'll upgrade each of um, Blake's things uh, once, then Weiss, and Yang, and Ruby, yeah, and I just kept going from there. Jump to each girl over and over and over again. Impractical? Absolutely. But I wanted to give them all their due. I didn't want... As easy as it is, I actually fought all of my base urges and tried to not show preferential treatment. I know uh, uh, Ray absolutely did that. Yeah, I'm sure they did. Good for them. Yeah, once he realized how broken the Shadow Clone strategy was, he just upgraded Blake as soon as he could. Okay, well, here's the thing. You could obviously just do that with Blake. I deliberately chose not to, not just because I liked playing as the other girls too much to do that, I also didn't want to make the game that easy. I mean... I mean, that's, 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 just, that's just how I roll. I mean, I didn't, I didn't want to cheese the entire dang game. You know, it'd be funny if Blake actually had a line of dialogue to comment on that. <laughs> Anywho, uh... So, but yeah, getting all those skill points isn't exactly easy, because some of them are deviously hidden, and that is another way forward staple. Dude, Lots two of, of them of are hidden in the first level. I know. And Lots when I found that out, I was just like... I'm mad, but also impressed. Yeah, no, way forward are experts at this. They, almost all of their games have tons of collectibles all over the damn place. And think... some of them are, like hidden in plain sight, and you don't even realize it. It's amazing. I think I gave like, you a heads up on uh, one of them. You did, yes. You basically just told me that there is, like, at least one in the first level that is super easy to miss. Yeah. I, I was right. And you were, it is. And then, you can if you can jump up or use the platforms that Weiss makes, then there's, a one, there's another one right behind that one. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, eventually, they're able to bust down the whole thing, and they get to Bram Thornmane, and why is, he, why is he creating all of these drama bombs to bring in all these Grimm? Because he hates Ironwood, thinks he's a scumbag. Bram wanted to be an Aesop, and he wasn't allowed, so he's going to start murdering people. And that way he'll know that he's not insane. Good plan, dude. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty generic like, villain plan, but... Yeah, no, he wasn't a... He, he's not a fantastic villain, I concede this. But... Eh, I mean, this is also just meant to be a fun platforming game. It's just like, a sh it's a fun it's a fun short platforming game made for people who like Ruby. Yeah, or even and just like platformers if you like. Honestly, I feel I feel like even if you've never played Ruby, you could probably end up with this game and go, I don't really understand a lot of what's going on, but I had fun. Yeah, I could easily see that because Way Forward just make good games. Yeah, you know, calling back to uh, Ray, he's like not really watched Ruby outside of the first episode, despite working Oof. at the company for a while. Um, yeah, that's weird. Uh, he played through, uh, he played through Arrowfell, and, yeah, he had fun with it. 
There you go, that's all I really need. Speaking of people that don't want to rewatch Ruby, neither does like the entire team of, of, of Death Battle, which is just weird. <laughs> Anywho. I mean, if, 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 they have at least uh, one researcher who... Who does? Yeah. Shout out to DJ Tiki. Woo! But uh, yeah, anyway, they are able to eventually get down to Bram, and the fight commences. And he's got some pretty good moves. He can make it rain arrows all over the damn place. In fact, you might say he's able to make arrows fall. Ah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I went out of my way to try to make sure that all of the girls uh, did their thing. But also, he can bring in the, 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 the orbs to summon up a bunch of different Grim. But the girls are awesome and badass, and they're able to beat the ever-loving tar out of him, and mm. it's good. And as Bram is being uh, br brought into custody, he yells out that you'll all see the man that Ironwood actually is. And man, even like in my let's play, I just flat out couldn't contain myself. It's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um... like, yeah. Well, he ain't wrong. He ain't wrong. I also like before that cutscene plays and. He's just like, how can I lose to a bunch of kids? And Ruby's like, we told you, licensed huntresses. He brought it back. She brought it around from the whole Lang thing. But uh, yeah, so then Ironwood is basically like, so hey ho, you guys gonna keep this on the down low? And Yang does a little winky. It's like, yeah. And then, and and then they all do a, a sweet uh, a four way fist bump and do some. And then they say team, and it's cute, and I loved it. And this was a really fun game. Yeah, it was. Like, I, I literally cannot get over their, their fist bump. It is so nice. That was so cute. I like these girls. Me too. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we each like one in particular, but we still yeah, love the team. All, of course. So, yeah, that's Ruby Arrowfell. It's a short game. It's a simple game, but it's so fundamentally solid that there's... Like, obviously, any game could be better, but there's really yeah. nothing wrong with the game at all. Yeah, I mean, like, if I could request, like, one feature, I would say, I don't know, like, a, like, refight all the bosses. Yeah, you'd like a boss rush mode act, uh, to be added. Yeah, something like that. Like, yeah. And, don't, and, like, don't, don't heal you in between them. Like, you have to fight every boss in the game in sequence with one set of health. Like, can you do it? That would be dope. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's like, um, I remember Sonic Adventure 2 had that. Wait, like, you take one story side, and you just fight all their bosses, like, back to back. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. And you get, like, a rank at the end. Like, depending oh, on, yeah. like, uh, how well you did and how, uh, how, like, what what time you had overall. Yeah, totally. But, uh, yeah, no, this is basically the perfect blend of WayForward and Ruby, essentially. If you like either of those things, you're gonna like this. I, I, I feel very confident. Even if you're not blown away by the spectacle of it, which, understandable, it is a simple game. Yeah. Uh, you're, you will not hate the game. It will be a perfectly enjoyable experience, yeah, no matter what. It, like, in terms of difficulty, it really depends on if you know what you're doing. Yeah. And, like... Figure out what the girls are good at, focus on that, and, and, and work on the teamwork aspect until you can, like, max out one of the girls. Then you can pretty much just do whatever you want. Yeah, and, like... I, I have seen, like, a take where it's just, like, maybe the, like, Shadow Clone thing could have done with, like, a, a revisit. Because yeah, they probably could have looked over that, because it seems like a pretty big oversight of just how overpowered it is. Yeah. But I do get the overwhelming impression that, like a lot of but then again, games, this, like, this, game, this game didn't have a ton of budget, and they had a time limit. Yeah, plus, like, if the Shadow Clones were just pop them down... Well then, they're not much use, like, outside they had to do of the puzzle. Something else. Yeah, they had to do something else. They couldn't just stand there. Yeah, otherwise, uh, then it would only be a puzzle-based ability, and you'd, you'd, That'd be you'd lame. probably not play. You'd probably look if Blake didn't have that, then she would have outright been outshone by all of the other girls in one way or another. Yeah. Because Ruby and Yang would have hit harder than her melee-based, and Weiss would have done. Well, more Yang than would have hit faster. Have. Yeah, I know, but she accumulatively hits harder. Yeah. Cause she can she can she can punch like four times than the time it takes Blake to swing her sword twice. So it's it's that sort of thing. And Weiss would be the the melee uh, the, the the ranged master, so I get where they were coming from. It could have used a little more tweaking, but it was still good. 
Uh, personally, I, I'd call it a, a, a perfectly serviceable, like, I mean, I'm biased as hell, but I, I'd easily give it, like, a, a solid 7, 8 out of 10. Yeah, I mean, even just stuffing on the Blake Shadowcon thing, I'm biased as hell as well, if anything, just because of what this could imply for Blake and Versus. Yeah, so, like, she can just basically create two doubles of herself that are just as powerful as she is. Yeah, so basically just take her strength and triple it. <laughs> there you go, essentially. Which... Now that I think about yeah. it, it's basically Sun Semblance, wait! This unfortunately adds to a theory of us. I've only oh just realized god. that. Oh my god, Sun, you're pointless! <laughs> That's for another day, another day, another day, but oh my god! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> anyway, anyway! Anyway, anyway, so the thing I was gonna mention, yeah. like, yeah, I brought up uh, Blake being in Death Bell. I'm so happy this came out afterwards, Jesus. Yeah, because if, uh, if if Blake could have made herself, uh, made me, because I have to fight three of her at the same time. No. Oh man. It was already a, it was already one sided. That's just mean. Yeah. All right, so we've been talking for a long time. This is already one of our our longer discussions, but there is one last thing I want to talk about. Mm hmm. So. The escalation of Ruby video games has been pretty solid so far. Yeah, I, okay, um, so we got, like, like uh, I want to say hack and slash. Yeah, no, in... Grim, Eclipse is, Grim Eclipse is a hack and slash. It's a fan-made hack and slash. It's got its own problems, but it's still, a, a, if you ha especially if you have friends, it's a fun time to go through. Yeah, and remember that this started as just like a fan project. It was a fan project that Rooster Teeth just thought was cool, and they were like, "Hey, yeah, sure, we can, we can, we can uh, p properly advertise this, make this a real game." I feel like people have like ridiculously high standards for that game, and they are way too harsh about it. Yeah. But um, uh, but either way, I think it was fine. Then you got uh, Team Ruby showing up in cross tag battle, so they were in a fighting game. Mm -hmm. And Neo. And, now we're in Neo. <laughs> and then. We had one step above, I think either of those really is this game, which is a very solid platforming, uh, you know, Shantae-esque game. This is basically the same gameplay as Shantae. Yeah. And I really enjoyed it. So I have to ask you, what would be your absolute 100% dream game okay, I for have, the Ruby franchise? I have thought a lot about this. Now, okay, there's the obvious, like, oh, just a standalone fighting game made by Arc System Works. Like, that would be totally cool. That that's it just you know, just a plain old Ruby fighting game. I'd get that. I'd be totally down. But the one I would love so much, like no limits whatsoever. Anything you want. I would go for a Persona style game. Like, so obviously they, not so like would... you know going into another world and like fighting with like, yeah, you know, your no, sword but, and like, you but. You, what you're saying is you want basically an RPG with social aspects. Yeah, like... Okay, you could either have it like you play as Ruby or you play as like a Nuka. I, I've actually thought a lot about uh, what you could do with like even the plot of this. Yeah, no, so, there's lots of options. So, uh, brand new cast. Like, mm -hmm. well, just just four and you're like just... You're in like the first year of uh, Beacon. Yeah. Um... And, you know, Team Ruby's story is, like, going on just, like, in the background, but you can still interact with them. Yeah. Uh, you can, like, explore Beacon and Vale. Uh, you can go out on, like, uh, Huntsman missions to, like, you know, build up your XP, get some money. Yeah. And it works great because Persona games already have, like, a party of four at a time anyway. Exactly. So uh, you, could just make, you could just make a whole brand new thing. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit daring to have, like, this game not actually star Team Ruby... But I, again, this is all hypothetical and dream ideas. Oh. And I, I think I think it would be cool. No, a way I thought about the, you know, you could still have Team Ruby be a thing. Oh, how so, so? I was thinking story missions, those are a separate thing. Those are for your team. Okay. But the Huntsman and Huntress's missions, you can take whatever team you like. Oh, I like that idea. So you could take whichever trio you want. Oh. I like that idea. And of course, like, the social links that you build with them the more benefits they have in those missions that makes sense uh, so you could just you could outright team up with team ruby yeah that would be dope um 
And, you know, of course, like, Persona, like, you max out the social link, you get that option. Uh... No, are you this, really gonna go there? No, 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 this might be asking too much. Yes, I think it is. I would like an alternative option where it's just like, okay, you have the enter an intimate uh, relationship option. Mm -hmm. You have the just stay friends option. Or, you have the option where you encourage that character to, you know, be with a different person. Like, say if you yeah. max out yeah. Nora's, but you yeah. ship her with Ren, you're just like, hey, that Ren guy, he's cool. Yeah. Like, basically. Yeah, no, hey, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna diss your, your, your dream pie in the sky idea. That's totally cool, dude. Yeah, although I will admit for certain characters, Man, that could open up a can of worms. Like, imagine if you max out, uh, Blake's, and the only option is Yang. Yeah, that, there's a lot of things that, not even just that, there are a lot of things that, complications that would come from that. Yeah, and, I, I, you know, I of course, that, like... I imagine if they did do something like this, like, you could probably, uh, your, your character could probably get together with your other teammates and other original characters made for the game. You know what? Yeah, actually, that works better. Yeah, whereas all of the official characters you could just be good friends with. Yeah, you know, that's probably the way to go. Does um, that bum me out slightly? For reasons that I won't get into? Yes. Same. But it is the safer option. Yeah. And, like, yeah, that's that idea of just, like, you encourage them to, like, pair up with somebody else. Given how shippers are, like, you know, <laughs> if, if let's say, you have Blake and Yang, what about the people who ship her with Sun? But what about the people who ship her with this person? And oh, what about the people who ship Ruby and Weiss? Or Ruby and. Like. <sighs> what about the two people that ship Ladybug? Yeah, it gets to a point where you're just like, okay, there's obviously so many of these we can't do. Yeah. But then there are those where just like, if you exclude that, then, you know, it's gonna cause like a whole thing. The it's easier just to cut the whole yeah. thing off. Just don't o don't open up that can of worms and stick with the original characters if you're gonna bring romance into the situation. Yeah, and as that, for that's how I would imagine it. Yeah, but of course, like there's the issue of just like, okay, well, what do you do with a villain? Because obviously, you can't have it be Cinder, Torchwick, or Salem yeah, without causing it. some complication. Yeah, you could just make a new one. Or you take an existing one that hasn't been fleshed out all that much. I think this would be a prime opportunity to reintroduce Doctor Molo. That is actually a really good idea. And, to make the story a bit more personal, have your character be a Mountain Glen survivor. Oh, Mo, you did think about this. For the record, uh, that's the, 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 the main bad guy of Grim Eclipse, ain't it? Yep, and it was yeah. it was ultimately because of him that like, the Mountain Glen disaster happened. Oh, yeah. It would tie everything together real well. I like that idea. Plus, you could reintroduce the mutant Grim, like... You know, those Which would be would really like, help out. Yeah, that would help out with that enemy variation. Exactly. I like it. I thought about this so much. <laughs> I want to. Okay, so I'll try not to, to to go on too long, but I want to talk about. Nah, my go on dream. as long as you want. I want to talk about my dream Ruby game. Okay. I want basically Ruby Warriors. Uh, oh, like a. Dynasty, like Warriors Dynasty Warriors sort of thing? Warriors, uh, Hyrule Warriors, Fire Emblem Warriors, you've seen them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want that. I want oh, that'd be, be cool. I want to pick any of the characters I like. It, yeah, obviously Weiss a lot, obviously, but I'd play as everybody. I want to I wanna grab a character I like, I want to drop down in a big open area, and I want to fight waves of Grim. <laughs> Have them cut through and use these awesome special moves to obliterate gigantic-ass armies of Grim. I need it in my life so bad. That would be really cool. And, like, the, one of the cool things is, uh, with the way these games usually work is you can, uh, you could play as so many characters, like, so many characters. Like, obviously, you'd have teams Ruby and Juniper, but you could also totally include, uh, deeper cuts. You could, uh, you could have, uh, any members of Team Sun that you want or Team Coffee. And, oh, uh, man, Velvet would be awesome. 
you could play, yeah, yo, know, they, 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 like, if you, if you played as Velvet, she'd basically be, like, a hodgepodge of all the other characters, and it would make its own unique moveset by copying from everyone else's. It'd be cool! And you could also probably play as, I don't know, just go crazy! I, I like, I, I'm going crazy with this. You want to play as, uh, Team Stark? You could, uh, or, or, uh, or whatever you want to, you can play as Raven, or Ty, or, or, or Glenda. I, I you go nuts, man! Uh, oh, you, you know what? Raven opens up. Yeah. Raven would, would open up so much just because of the maiden powers. Exactly, but you could. You want to play as the villains? Show sure, them that you can go ahead and you can play as Cinder or Salem or or, 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 or Watts. I don't care. Whatever, Adam. man. It's all Adam. Yeah. Hey, look. Some people like him. You want to play as him? That's an option. Hell, you, you want to have what? a mode where he fights like waves and waves of White Fang? <laughs> like, I guess go for that as well. <laughs> You could! And here's the thing, here's the best part, it works for both sides, because the way that the games are structured, you have to fight other characters constantly. So if you don't like the villain characters, you could just beat the crap out of them! That's what I would do! Mm. You, it, it, you want you want those you want those dream matchups, you want you want those things, then you could totally do it. You could make it happen, and I want it. Are you one of those people that was mad that we never saw a uh, Weiss Adam? interaction, and boom, you can yeah. have them fight each other in this game. Yeah, you can have Weiss kick a Adam's ass, and that'd be great! I'd well, be doing that! That's all I'm about! Also, that's so, another reason to do the fighting game. Uh, and yes, it is, but I'm just saying, if you want to be much more flashy about it, you can, you can totally do a Dynasty Warriors game with Ruby characters, and I... Mm, give me... <laughs> just, you, you don't understand. If it was like, okay... I would give it, like, a Hyrule Warriors budget, because, you know what that would mean, my guy? Oh, let me tell you what that means. That means that would be, like, at the mere minimum, like, 35 playable characters, and they would all have at least one alternate costume. Oh, that sounds, like, oh, that sounds really cool. It really would. So, like, if you were, if you, like, you, so, although, an example. Although, just, what would yes. you go for for alternate outfits? Would you just go for, like, okay, so you start with, like, the Volume 1 designs, and then you can go, like, uh, oh yeah, four, oh yeah, no, here, here we go, I was about to say, uh, yeah, it's like, let me, let, let me lay it down for you, my guy, alright? Say, okay, I'm gonna just, pie in the sky time, let's like, like say, the members of Team Ruby get as many outfits as, like, Link did in Hyrule Warriors. Basically, what that would mean is, say, Weiss, because again, buy is to sell, you'd get the Volume 1 outfit, the Volume 4 outfit, the Volume 7 outfit, you'd get Snoopy, you'd get the Pajamas, you get the you get the battle armor from uh, from Grim Eclipse. Oh, that'd be nice to see. Uh, you could, oh god, you could get uh, you could even bring in different color variations if you so chose. You could make up new costumes if you wanted. Oh yeah, for like color worlds, what if you could just like alter the colors of like the outfits? Yeah, well, there's no reason not to. I don't see why not. Oh, you know what else? Obviously, the freaking uh, Ice Queendom outfits. <gasps> Oh, yeah! You Wait. Can, you can use those! Wait, would that include both Lucid Dream Blake and uh, Negative Blake? Hell yeah, it would! Awesome. <laughs> you gonna? You think they're gonna just pass up and only use one of those? Hell no! Nah. You can- you wanna be- you wanna be Shadow Blake? You can be Shadow Blake. <laughs> Hell yeah! Oh, wait, it's... would- wait, would Shadow Blake and Shadow Weiss have, like, unique dialogue? I don't see why they wouldn't! That- Oh. Well then, at that point, we'll not just make them separate characters. You could if you wanted! Well, that would, I sure. guess it would work better as, like, just alternate costumes, because... Same characters, just different clothes. Yeah, look, there's, look there's, there's being realistic, and then there's being optimistic. And in the world of the optimistic, it can be anything you want it to be. But I would personally go with alternate costumes, but you could. You could do it. And... I've, I, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this, because I play a lot of Dynasty Warriors. Oh, wait, would you also games. include the uh, dance dresses? Yes! Thank you for bringing that up. Oh. Absolutely. And we got to include that for Jean. Absolutely. No, Dress <laughs> dress Jean is totally playable. But, like, you could do so much, because every single character fights so uniquely. Like, Weiss fights totally different from Pyrrha, and who fights differently from Nia, who fights differently from freaking... I I don't know, Shady Man, throw him in there, I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know about him being playable, but like, I could see him no, just I... like appearing as like an enemy. Like, maybe yeah, you fight like waves a, a of, uh, 
ravens, bandits. Absolutely. But like, okay, now, now the actual, like, actual impossible option here. Okay. This is this is this would be the the piece de la resistance. Okay. In Hyrule Warriors, specifically, not a lot of other games do this. But basically, one character can be more than one character by what weapon they're using. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait, most Ruby characters only have, like, one weapon. That's true. However, you could easily still, for some characters, you could more properly implement their semblances. Now, here's what I'm trying to say here, okay? Say with someone like Ruby, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, she's got her scythe, and it, it's it's good. Now, and you could also have a move set that's like, while well, she would still use her speed, obviously, or her pedal burst, she could basically have an alternate move set where it's basically almost entirely that, and you could incorporate more of the gunplay with that one, more gun akimbo that way with her sniper rifle. And that way, that, that way you can you can mix and match. And maybe the Silver Eyes? Absolutely. And, say, with someone like uh, Weiss. Sure, one of her movesets would just straight up be Mirtnaster. Just using all of her various types of dust. That she could have an entire thing where her entire moveset is just summoning up various grim. Ooh. Now here's one of my crazier ideas that I really love. For Yang. You know what an alternate weapon for Yang would be? Go for it. Bumblebee, her motorcycle. <laughs> you drive around on the motorcycle and you just crash into the crap. You can't tell me she wouldn't be able to do it. Oh, that'd be like um, oh, that'd be like Zelda in um, Age of Calamity. Yeah, it would. It absolutely would. There are things you could do. And there are there is so much potential here. Dude, there's a lot of like, potential for bo both our ideas. I like them a lot. No, they're both phenomenal. If either of them happened, I would be the happiest lad to be whatever. But, like, yeah, that's something I would desperately want. I mean, hey. There, there you go. Where's the teeth? If you, I mean, Kruby. Yeah. If, if you want ideas, just we got them. Just take them. Just take them. We don't care. Just take them. I mean, that being said, I would like some just, royalties. It would be nice to get some money out of it. I would be nice, but I'm not going to be greedy. <laughs> I'm not gonna be greedy, but just like... Just give me more Ruby stuff. I am obsessed. Same. I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I dare say there has to at least be one more Ruby video game in the future somewhere around there, and I'm, I'm waiting for it. Yeah. And I mean, there's still the possibility of just, like, the standalone fighting game, because, I mean... I'll take it, I'll take the standalone fighting game. As long as they have unique character interactions for each pairing, then I'll take that. Yeah, and I wouldn't mind this because it's a thing that uh, Dragon Ball games used to do. And I guess, yeah. technically, uh, universe games uh, still sort of do it. Why'd I do? Uh, the what-if uh, scenarios. Oh, man, yeah. Like, honestly, that could work for either of our ideas. Like, just alt stories of mild differences, or just straight up, like, you know what, like, yeah, like, what if Adam ha uh, made a siege on the Shinee Dust Company? Ooh. You know, like, you don't have to get super daring with the story concept, just just take a, 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 a neat base idea and just roll with it. And then, like, you can either, if you want to play as Adam, sure, but otherwise you play as Weiss or Winter, and... Back, you know, back off the hordes. You know, it's a thing. You could do it. Hmm. I, there's there there are so many things that you could just do. Like, what if what if character decided to just do thing? Would would they be able to do thing, or would other characters they're going up against be able to stop thing? It could be as simple as that. Hmm. And I love it. I love it so much. Whoo! That was a fun conversation. About that, that was. Now, I, okay, full disclosure, uh, before we, we'll end this before we reach the two-hour mark. We're very close. Oh my god. Um, yeah. Uh, so hey, if you listen to all of this, you are insane, and we love you. Um, but uh, I just, uh, I, full disclosure, I started this thinking this one was going to be one of our quicker ones, because I didn't think we were going to have enough to say. Honestly, why same. Do keep, why do I keep doubting us? We are the ultimate ramblers. 
Watch Volume 9 and, like, each episode is just gonna be three hours. Dear God, I hope not. Honestly, I don't. <laughs> Maybe the first one because we have so much pent-up energy. But after that, surely, surely we can dial it back. Oh, God. What if Blake and Yang kiss? How long is that one gonna be just on my end? I don't know. I'm basically gonna take a nap in the middle. <laughs> You'll still be talking. Watch, it's gonna be a six hour long video and no uh, one is gonna wanna watch it, which I understand. Absolutely not, but we'll have had fun making it. And you know what, at the end of the day, that's really why I do these. It's just fun to talk to you about things that we enjoy. That That's why we're here. Yeah. And anyone else who wants to listen, they're free to. Hmm. That being said, that was Ruby Arrowfell, a very solidly good game that I'm very glad that we finally, finally got to play. Yeah. It took forever, but it's we shame got there it. wasn't co-op, but... Yeah, that's still very weird, because it was absolutely originally sold as a co-op game. At least like, I'm the pretty way this sure game, it was. I'm gonna have to go back and check. Go, I, I could have sworn they, they sold it as like, oh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a co-op. Like, I, it sounded like it was gonna be like a co-op beat-em-up. Like, um, how they make River City Girls, or something. Or well, that but, TMNT uh, game. Or that TMNT game that came out, but, you know, basically the same genre. Um, so, I Hey, you know I what, maybe that could be that. a future Ruby game. Oh, 100%. Oh, look, if they want to make, like, a, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like, uh, you know, four-player, beat-em-up style game where you just play as Team Ruby, sold! Yeah, I would absolutely buy that. Just also make sure, for the love of God, to put it on Steam and have it have, like, online multiplayer, please. <laughs> Or I like, am... or the bare oh, minimum God. switch, because it's what we both have. Exactly. I'm just saying, for the love of God, just online multiplayer, please. God. That would be nice. Anyway, anyway, that's enough rambling. I had a lot of fun. Hope you guys did too. I think mate might have had a little bit of fun. It's hard to tell with that. Oh, I definitely I did. did. Okay, here we go. Good, good. I had to make sure. All right then. Hope you uh, enjoyed yourselves. We will see you later. Bye. Hopefully in the next game, one goal won't be massively broken. Yeah, that'd be